Gynecological surgery and infertility treatment has been my passion for the last 34 years. I dedicated my life to helping people and I get great satisfaction and happiness when I treat a couple and they achieve pregnancy. After 20 years of doing IVF, I still feel the same excitement as when I get first started when a couple get pregnant. I graduated from university in 1976. I was doing my specialty in obstetrics and gynecology when IVF was first reported in 1978. I experienced the development of infertility treatment in 1980s and developed my own skills. The real progress in infertility treatment came in the 90s when ICSI was first discovered. That is when I myself, and at that time, I myself started doing it. There were great advances in science during my 34 years of work in the field of infertility, specifically in the 20 years I've been doing IVF. Um, to mention some of these advances, the equipment in laboratories, specifically the incubator and the in microscopes we use, have greatly advanced. We now use CO2, O2 incubators. Each patient has their own incubator to avoid changes in the concentration level of gases, in the drop in temperature, or the exposure to light. There was also great advances in the media we used to culture the embryos. All this has resulted in higher pregnancy rates. The staff of the IVF laboratory is continuously updating their knowledge and training to get the best results. We introduced laser lately in the treatment of infertility. We use laser. Now, laser was introduced in our work. We use it to thin the zona pellucida, which is the shell of the embryo, to get better chances of implantations. We also use it to make a hole in the zona pellucida, which, as I said, the shell of the embryo, to be able to take a cell and examine its chromosomes or genes when we do pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Another advance is in the field of freezing of the embryos. Uh, we get the same pregnancy rate now from frozen embryos as we do for, from fresh ones. As a matter of fact, recent studies have shown less pregnancy complications for the mother from frozen embryos than from fresh transfer. Another advance is MC intracytoplasmic morphologically selected sperm injection where you check the sperm at a magnification of 6,600 and sometimes 8,000 times and then we select the best sperm to inject the egg. This is a tedious process which is done in the lab and it takes between two to two and a half hours or we get the best embryos and we get high pregnancy rates. There are many factors which play a role in increasing the IVF success rate. The two most important factors I want to mention here is first the experience of the IVF team. Tailoring the treatment, tailor. We tailor the treatment for each patient. It, this is vital. Avoiding certain set protocols as was the case in the past, it results in higher pregnancy rate. Another important factor is the IVF laboratory. The skill of the staff Continuously updating the lab with the latest technology, all this improves the success rate. Previously, we used to do IVF as a last resort. It was the last resort which we resort to when we treat infertility. As science advanced, there are many cases where we resort to these technologies very early in the treatment, as in the cases where the man has problems in his semen due to increased count or motility problems, or when the, he has sperms in his testes, but not in the semen. Another example is in women over the age of 40, where fertility is lower and the woman doesn't have time to play with, so we choose the quickest method, which is IVF. Just to tell you, in our center, 
uh, the success rates in IVF um, for women less than 35 years is between 65 to 70 percent. In women between 36 to 39 years old, they're 50 to 55 percent, and above 40 years old, between 20 to 25 percent. Um, finally, I'd just like to say good luck. May God make, make you happy. Best of luck.